Are you looking for ways to maximize your income and minimize your tax along the way as you enter into retirement? I think most of us are. And in this video, I wanna go through a really important tool to use as you enter into retirement to make sure that you're minimizing your taxes. My name's Adam, welcome to the channel. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're gonna to talk about income splitting. And a lot of you that qualify for income splitting, if you have a spouse or common law partner, this video is gonna be very important to you. So make sure you follow along. So in this video, I wanna share our software that we use, which is Snap Projections. A lot of you ask what software we use. It's called Snap Projections. It is for industry only. So you can't, as a consumer, uh, reach out to them and, and purchase that. Uh, but I do wanna show you kind of how income splitting works and the benefit of income splitting. Now, if you're wondering like what type of income qualifies for income splitting, I'll put that link below. And that talks about all the different types of retirement income or income sources that qualify for income splitting. Now, in a general overview, income splitting qualifies once you hit age 65. So RIF income as an example, for a lot of you, that's your main income in retirement can be income split. Now, if you have a defined benefit pension plan, a DB plan, any income from a defined benefit pension plan can also be split before age 65. There's also some other smaller income sources that possibly could be income split. Again, that's in the link below. You can check that out, read more on that. But for most of you watching this video, if you have a defined benefit plan, that can be split at any age, so pre-65. For the rest of you, you'll have you know RIF or a LIF account that can be split 65 onward. And that's one of the reasons, even if you don't need the money necessarily, a lot of you will want to convert from an RSP to a RIF for the pension income uh, tax credit, as well as income splitting. So a lot of you ask like, why would I convert my RSP to a RIF? Pension income tax credit, and the income splitting are two big reasons for that. So jumping into the software here, you can see we have Dave and Ruth YouTube who we've used before here and a 62 year old couple looking to retire here. Uh, we have Dave with a Lear of 600,000 and a TFSA of 50,000. Uh, Ruth, a little bit different. We have for her here, it'll go over to her assets, uh, 75,000 in an RSP and 50,000 in a TFSA. So what I've done here, and I'm keeping this super simple, I'm not going to go into like an RSP meltdown and a lot of stuff we do as we dive deeper into the plan. I just want to show at a high level the difference with income splitting. And so in this plan right here, we have no income splitting. So if I jump into Dave here, you'll see uh, kind of the layout. A lot of you that have followed our channel for a while, you would have seen this uh, view before here. But this is Dave's asset. You can see his Lear and it's TFSA. And again, I'm just kind of letting this draw down. But what I've done here is you can see this pension income splitting. And if I click on here, you can see I've suspended that. So I've turned off income splitting. Now what that does is I'm saying, look, this client's retiring at 62. I have them mapping out all the way living till age 90. You know, they need income for a lifetime. Uh, we're taking their CPP and OAS at 65, so no kind of timing there. Just kind of left it to the default. Now, same thing for Ruth. If I go to a combined view, what I want to do is say, based on the assets they've built, CPP and OAS and all that, with no income splitting, they have an income of $60,978. So that is the after-tax inflation-adjusted number in their pocket every single year. Now what I want to do is, what does this number look like if we turn on income splitting and leave everything else the same? So now we've jumped into the same example and you can see the column pension income splitting. Now, because Dave has a Lira and not a defined benefit pension plan, he's not able to split this income until age 65. But at age 65, because he has a larger account versus Ruth, he's able to split you know, a large part of his income with Ruth. So as we turn that on, if I go back to a combined view, the last income was 60,978 with the income splitting, no additional assets, nothing else. We bumped their income up by close to $1,000 just by that income splitting. So this is important to note, like, can you income split the retirement income that you have? When can you split it? How does it work? How to make these things come together? Now I've used a very, very simple illustration here saying, you know, one spouse has a large registered account, the other one has a small account. So obviously we wanna pass some of the income over. This is very common, whether it's husband to wife, wife to husband, spouse to spouse, doesn't matter who it is, where it goes, typically lopsided accounts. But even if you're equal, sometimes depending on the year where you wanna draw money down, all that, income splitting can be a very large and crucial part of your overall retirement and tax plan. Now, the last thing I wanna show you in here, if I go combine tax, so this is a total tax bill from now to retire, or now till death, you can see here, if we do income splitting, 
the total tax bill is $110,000 total tax. If I go back to the no income splitting, we can click on the total tax and you'll see $157,000 of total tax. So there you have it. Income splitting can be a huge tax benefit for you. So obviously more money after tax money in the client's pocket, which obviously will equate to less taxes paid to CRA. It also can create a better tax situation. Again, there's more money to play with, meaning that A, you can do more stuff, spend more money early, but also potentially more for your estate if that's a wish of yours. So make sure you understand how income splitting works, what income qualifies, and again, we put that link below, and make sure you understand how to implement it within your retirement plan. So hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully it saves you some tax. We'll see you in the next video.